What if the Traveler is also unavailable? What am I supposed to do? Well, that's your problem. It was your choice to get into this mess. Oh, but fortunately for you, it appears your savior has just arrived. Hmm? Ah, Traveler. Great, you made it. Huh. <laughs> well, it's not like you were ever really busy to begin with. Ugh, Songo. Compared to the Traveler, you're the one who has too much free time. No, I'm very busy. I'm busy standing here. I have to stand here all day. Even if it's a commission you're unwilling to take, your excuse is just pathetic. Yes, that's why I've asked you to come over. Allow me to explain. A key member of the Tenryo Commission has recently gone missing. No one has seen them, and their whereabouts are currently unknown. The Tenryo Commission has entrusted us to find this person discreetly, because it would be a hassle for them to look for this person openly for a variety of reasons. Their name is... Kujosara. That's right. The General has gone missing. <sighs> if the General was really missing, the Tenryo Commission would have flipped Inazuma on its head by now. And do you think they would only commission us for a case like that? Please ignore Sango's nonsense, Traveler. In fact, the missing person's name is Shikanoin Heizo. He works as a special detective at the police station. Although his rank is merely a doshin, he is quite competent and held in high regard by the police station. Ugh. Do they think he's more competent than me? <sighs> we get that you don't want to help, Sango, but could you at least try not to make things more difficult here? Sorry, Traveler. Even though I accepted the commission, as you can see, Sango's less than thrilled to be involved in this case. Nope. Not even close. If you really want to know why, it's because I absolutely refuse to deal with that brat's nonsense. The only news that could make me happier than Shikanoin has gone missing would be Shikanoin has been missing for a hundred years! <clears throat> Needless to say, Sango and Heizo have a bit of a history. Um... Uh... Ah, uh, well, it's a little more serious than that. According to Sango, Heizo was an obstacle in her path to the Temple of Truth. Like a yappy dog that was constantly in the way. <sighs> Even though Heizo has a unique personality, he's actually a nice guy. Really, I've learned a lot from him. So I can't just ignore this case, even if Sango doesn't approve. At the very least, I could entrust the Commission to someone capable and trustworthy, like you, Traveler. Huh? No, no, it's not like that. Listen, I'll pay the entire amount originally promised by the Tenryo Commission, and I'll even personally throw in some additional funds. I'm really hoping you can take this commission, Traveler. If Heizo truly is in danger, I know he'll be safer with you by his side. Actually, we get along great. But Sango has always asked me to keep my distance and not to act like I know him in public settings. So, when people ask, I usually just say I've met Shikanoin a few times. If it hadn't been for today's incident, I'd... Uh, well, let's not get into that. Anyway, could you please help look for him? Well, that's about all I have to tell you. Oh, please take this commission letter from the police station. If you find Heizo, return there and report back to them. Oh, it's you! The captain of Swordfish 2? My name is Shibata. I'm in charge of the watch here. May I inquire as to what the captain needs? So his name is Shikano and Heizo, huh? Yes, I'm familiar with the detective. He used to stroll around the area. Her Excellency had assigned me to keep a close eye on him at the time, fearing that he would do something unpleasant but I eventually realized that he acted more like he was on a trip or something. Come to think of it, I believe he was recently spotted in the area east of the Sanganamiya Shrine. Please feel free to go there and take a look for yourself. Well, well, look who it is. I was wondering who could be valiant enough to wipe the floor with these guys so easily. Turns out it was the distinguished traveler. Really, I can't thank you enough. Of course I was aware of you long before you arrived in Inazuma. Though the Sakoku Decree managed to keep the country locked up, it wasn't able to stop the incredible stories about you. Every day, all of those little stories would come scurrying over to my desk, like files with little feet. I was actually thinking about going to meet you, once I wrapped up the business at hand. Who would have guessed that you'd show up first? <laughs> ah, 
I got so excited, I nearly forgot to introduce myself. Ahem. The name's Shikanoin Heizo, Special Detective of the Tenryo Commission. It's a pleasure to meet you, Traveler. I wish you all the best on your journey through Tevat, by the way. Huh. I guess that means I've taken over as the main character in your story today. I've always heard that you take commissions from all kinds of people, helping everyone out with everything you can imagine. So now it's my turn to take your help, huh? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. That was already obvious to me. It's no coincidence that you've arrived here. Because that would be the stuff of an epic novel. The two protagonists of the story both travel to Watatsumi Island by chance and cross paths as if by fate. The Traveler from afar heroically rescues the weak and defenseless detective from the clutches of the ruthless Nobushi. <sighs> Traveler, you are so dreamy. Unfortunately, though, I don't believe in coincidences. So... Guessing you came to me on the police station's commission, didn't you? I'm a detective. <laughs> Can you guess what gave it away? <laughs> Sounds like you already have some ideas about the work of a detective. Let me ask you this. What's that your little sidekick is holding? If I'm not mistaken, it's a commission letter from the police station. Uh, what? Uh, Paimon's just here to take a look! And hey, who are you calling a little sidekick? Paimon was worried he might be in danger, so Paimon came to help! <sighs> Why are you two staring at Paimon? Is Paimon not supposed to be here? Yeah, I'm also just taking a look. Hmm. He can look, but you can't. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be like that. After all, this is the first time I've seen a voice. I must admit, I'm most intrigued. Huh? Voice? What are you talking about? A vision is an external magical focus, right? Well, similarly, a voice is an external voice box. I've heard that the Traveler isn't very talkative, but given how chatty you are, you must be his voice, right? That sounds awful! Paimon's not somebody's voice! Paimon's emergency food! Uh, uh, uh no, uh, uh, wait! Oh, Paimon's so upset she can't think straight! Paimon is Paimon! How dare you give Paimon such a terrible nickname! We came here to rescue you, but you actually opened the cage yourself. You were only pretending to be captured by the Nobushi, weren't you? Mm, pretty suspicious if you ask Paimon. Come out with it, mister. What kind of schemes are you up to? Sheesh. For someone who says they don't want to be a voice, you sure do talk a lot. Hmm. <laughs> well, let me think for a moment. Yes, all this started a long time ago, during the war. Kujo Takayuki, who was head of the Tenryo Commission at the time, had secretly asked me to investigate the military capabilities of Sanganamiya. But I had already grown tired of the guy for a while, <laughs> so I simply treated the trip as a paid vacation. I had heard that Watatsumi Island is really beautiful. As for the mission, I thought I'd just come up with some random excuses or whatever when I reported back. But guess what? The first night I arrived on Watatsumi Island, I had a dream. The dream contained only one message, an echo resounding from the depths of the earth that kept ringing in my ears, saying... Something vital is missing on this island. Isn't that bizarre? Something vital has gone missing on this island. Has something evaporated into thin air? Hmm... What could it be? Paimon bets it must be something delicious. You know, because the soil of Watatsumi Island can't grow crops. There's a shortage of food here. Oh. Food, huh? Hmm... How about you, Traveler? What do you think is missing? Hmm... Oh, that was an unexpected response. <laughs> It'd be right at home in a novel. Interestingly, I didn't have the same dream again after I left this place. 
so I became even more intrigued. Was this really just some random dream? Some people believe that dreams represent the Divine's helping hand, which I suppose is understandable. However, if you ask me, dreams have nothing to do with the gods. Instead, they are flashes of intuition. It was my intuition telling me that there was something important about this island that... Poof! Suddenly vanished. So I decided to accept this little commission from my intuition and investigate to see if I could come up with any compelling findings. Unfortunately, the investigation has had little progress up to this point. Who knows? I felt there was something peculiar about them, so I pretended to get captured to see if there were any leads that would surface. And that's when you showed up. Nah, don't worry about it. These guys were just a bunch of small fries. Besides, your arrival is much more important to me. I have a feeling you can help me find the answer to my dream. So how would you like to partner up on this one? We can work together to solve the mystery. Yes, of course, I understand. But let me ask one more question. Did the police station say they are looking for me because of something important? Well, <laughs> Then it's probably nothing major. Most likely they're short on staff or something petty like that, and they happen to remember their model employee. So since we're already here, why don't we just solve this puzzle together? Once everything is settled, I'll gladly accompany you back to the police station, or anywhere else you'd like to go. What do you think? Ah, oh, what a sterling example of dedication. In that case, I'll accompany you back to the police station first. We can discuss the issue of Watatsumi Island later. Oh, look who showed up. Hey, Zo, you're finally back. Listen, if you took any longer to come back, everyone at the police station would be toast. You say that every time I come back, Uesugi. However, something does feel a little unusual about the police station this time. Come on, would I ever lie to you? Madam Kujo Saro is here, and she's on the warpath, so be on the lookout. <laughs> What's that lady doing here? Doshin Shikanoin. I see you've finally returned. Please, enlighten us. What have you been doing recently? Uh, okay. I was just out investigating a case. Don't give me that. I checked the records here. You didn't take any cases. Uh, actually, it's a case of personal relevance to me. These two can attest to that. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon, what are you two doing here? We're the ones who brought Hazel back! Brought him back? Can someone please explain? Uh, well, Madam Kujosara, because we couldn't locate Doshin Shikanoin, we commissioned Detective Ryuji from the detective agency. Shortly after, Ryuji returned to tell us... Uh, that he had given the commission to the Traveler... <clears throat> and then... Ugh, it used to be that the Tenryo Commission assisted others with disappearances. But it seems these days, others are now assisting us. You've done it this time, Shikanoin. I think I've really seen it all. <laughs> I mean, is it really so unusual for officers and citizens to assist one another? Yeah, it was kind of weird, but it was definitely an investigation. He even pretended to be captured by Nabushi and treasure hoarders. Oh? Is that so? Well, since you are testifying for him, I suppose I won't ask any more questions. But, since you're here, I have an extra favor to ask. I'd like you to be Shikanoin's temporary supervisor. It'll be your duty to ensure that he handles his case properly, and that he doesn't disappear and neglect his work again. I'll be sure that the police station prepares the appropriate compensation. Oh, uh, yes! Traveler, I I'm sure we'd all really appreciate it. Hmm. Hazu seems to be happy with the idea. <laughs> you should thank the Traveler this time, Doshin Shikanoin. Otherwise, I don't think I would have let you off so easily. Here, take this letter of complaint. It's written against you. Please consider carefully what to do with it. I do not wish to see another one. Understood? Huh? Someone filed a complaint? <laughs> that can't be right. Why would there be a complaint letter? Uh, you must not be doing your job properly, and now you're attracting complaints. 
No, it really doesn't add up. You two don't get it. Although Madame Kujosara just made some harsh remarks, we all know that Heizo Senpai is a real whiz when it comes to cracking cases. He's the biggest asset on our team. Several leaders have risen through the ranks as a result of his achievements. He's definitely no slacker. And he must have gotten himself into some kind of trouble. Well, let me see what's the deal here. Oh, and since you agreed to be my temporary supervisor, you'll find the desk where new case files are kept right over there. Would you mind helping me check what cases I need to deal with? <laughs> of course, but first I have to confirm what's going on and whether or not the letter's legit. Please, have a look at the case files first. So, have you gone through the case files? Is there anything that caught your eye? Another dog's gone missing, huh? I know that the detective agency regularly receives such cases. You know, if we ever had the time, we could tally how many dogs go missing in Inazuma each day. And then... Uh, anyway, just leave that case to Uesugi. This complaint letter I received is more important. I was hoping I wouldn't have to drag you into this, but it's just occurred to me that with your help, I might be able to wrap up this problem. Alright then, tell us about the complaint letter. It's from Songo, the president of Bantan Songo Detective Agency. I assume you've met her before? You can say that. Songo's complaint letter accuses me of abusing my power for personal gain and blatantly concealing the truth behind the Ryuji case from years ago. <sighs> Seriously, do I really seem like the type of person who'd do that? <laughs> Concealing the truth? That definitely sounds like something you would do. Hey, 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 don't judge a book by its cover, all right? Let's just go to the detective agency and talk to Sango. We'll need to speak with her to get to the bottom of this. Welcome back, Mr. Heizo. I'm glad you're all right. How about some tonkatsu? You must have missed the taste of home after so long. Maybe next time, Ryuji. Seems like somebody's been expecting me, and I'm afraid they're only going to be disappointed once again. Well, well, look who it is. The great Detective Hazo. What nonsense were you talking about just now? I've been worried about you, you know. So much so that I took the trouble to write that heartfelt letter to the Tenryo Commission. Well, was it sufficiently flattering for you? Uh-oh, they're at it again. <sighs> Let's not waste the traveler's time, Songo. Just tell me, what do you want? <laughs> Fine by me. My request is simple. Disclose all the details of the Ryuji case. It's time you stop hiding the truth and let me investigate it thoroughly. First of all, that case has already been solved. Second, I've disclosed everything the police station has on the case. And third... Enough! You can only fool Ryuji with that. If you don't want to cooperate, I can assure you that I will write more letters to the headquarters of the Tenryo Commission. I will not give up on this case. <sighs> Wait, hold on. Can someone please explain what's going on here? Paimon doesn't have a clue what you two are talking about. <sighs> All right, let me explain. Several years ago, a terrible murder took place in the police station. I was still working at the Tenryo Commission then, and the victim was actually... my dear boss. Due to various factors, I was deemed to be the top suspect, which is why it's called the Ryuji case. Also, Heizo wasn't a part of the police station back then. He was a detective at the agency, um, which at the time was called the Bantan Sango and Heizo Detective Agency. Wait, then why did Hazel leave? Hmm. After the incident, I was quickly convicted and sent to prison. Fortunately, Sango then promptly proved my innocence and caught the real murderer. But that murderer was actually just a dummy to throw us off, am I right, Detective Shikinoe? <sighs> Sango thought that everything went smoothly, so much so that she suspected the real murderer was someone else. Of course, Detective Heizo was also helping with the investigation, but after a long time, he still came up empty-handed. Later on, he decided to join the police station to continue his investigation on the inside, which is why he left the detective agency. Ha! That's what I thought, too. I was foolish enough to believe that Detective Shikinoing and I shared a common goal. 
but I was wrong about him. He has no sense of loyalty at all. He just wanted to become an official as a means of gaining fame and fortune. Come on, stop exaggerating. Let me set the record straight here. First, I joined the police station long after that murder case happened, and it had nothing to do with any inside investigation. That's just somebody's wishful thinking. Second, purely out of curiosity, I did investigate the case later from within the police station. My conclusion was that the suspect Sango had caught was in fact the real murderer. And lastly, when Sango didn't buy my conclusion and asked me to disclose all related case files from the police station, I did exactly as she asked. I didn't hide anything. <laughs> He's lying right through his teeth. That's it. I want this to end once and for all. Since the Traveler's my supervisor today, they have complete access to all the police station's files. If he's willing to help re-examine the case and arrives at the same conclusion that I did, then you won't have to doubt me anymore. Whoa. Huh? Unless you don't trust the Traveler. Hm. Come on, say it. <laughs> it's not about whether the Traveler's trustworthy. I'm just wondering if you will interfere somehow. <laughs> the thought never even crossed my mind. You have to swear that you will not mislead the Traveler by any means, and let him investigate the truth on his own. No problem. Cross my heart, hope to die. Well, Traveler, are you willing to help me with this? Will you agree to re-examine the Ryuji case and find the truth? You can bill me later for however much you'd like as compensation. Songo, really? However much they want? Money is valuable, no doubt. But pursuing the truth is the reason I started this agency. The Ryuji case is the only case I failed to solve. I am willing to give you anything. All right, I'm counting on you, Traveler. You hear that, Detective Shikanoin? Ha! Now we just need to wait and see. All right, all right, I got it. No need to keep yammering like that. You'll scare the kids next door. Come on, let's go back to the police station. All right, hang out here for a sec. I need to go to the archives to get the case files. For now, why don't you go and chat with Yuriki Owada over there? He worked on this case too back in the day. No, no, you misunderstand. It's not that I want you to look into this. It's just that you're the only one who can. You're the only one I can think of who Sango would ever believe. She trusts in both your qualities and abilities. So I hope your findings can finally convince her and put an end to this whole thing. Sure, she's just writing complaint letters for now, but who knows what she'll do in the future. <laughs> All right, I'll go get those case files. You go ahead and talk to Yuriki Iwata for a while. Oh, hello there. The Ryuji case. Oh, so you want to reinvestigate that one? That was several years ago now, but I still remember it clearly. It's pretty hard to forget something like that. Especially when the victim was the head of this police station. His name was Takatsukasa Isamu the younger brother of Takatsukasa Susumu, head of the Takatsukasa clan. He was really one of a kind. Decisive, brave, and smart. He was much younger than me, and already had quite a reputation. I'm sure he would have gone far in the Tenryo Commission, if only he was still alive. What a shame. Who would have guessed someone was plotting against him? <laughs> People will believe anything they hear. Everyone in the police station knew that Ryuji saw Takatsukasa Isamu like a father. Ryuji was an orphan, you know. Before he joined the station, he had been taking odd jobs here and there. It was Isamu who really took him under his wing. Ryuji was simple and not particularly bright, but he was very loyal to those who treated him well. He's also hardworking. Isamu must have seen these qualities in him and decided to keep Ryuji by his side. Ryuji worked with him for years after that, and was even promoted to be his personal assistant. Do you really think Ryuji would do anything to harm him? So, then why was Ryuji convicted? Even Paimon can tell that's a mistake! Well, here comes the interesting part of the case. Within a week, and before all the loose ends had even been tied up, Ryuji received his conviction. Moreover, it was signed by Madame Kujo Sara. What? Why would Sara do something like that? <laughs> I'm getting older now, and my eyesight is poor. I can't see too clearly anymore. Hey, come on, Yuriki Owada. There's nothing to see. It's obvious that the Kujo clan did it. 
You can't just go around saying things like that, Wisuki. Those were just hearsay. There was no evidence. That's not true. Traveler, you may be unaware that the Takatsukasa clan has always been assisting the Kujo clan in the Tenryo Commission. But who doesn't want to be the boss, right? And Takatsukasa Isamu was the key figure for the Takatsukasa clan to bring down the Kujo clan. At that time, no one was held in higher regard than Isamu. So naturally, the Kujo clan saw him as a potential threat. Kujo Takayuki must have been planning it all along, that rascal. Takayuki is able to control the Takatsukasa clan as long as he's in power. But by the time he retires, Isamu would have been at the apex of his political power, while Masahito and Kamaji of the Kujo clan would still have been too young. <laughs> the two of them wouldn't stand a chance against Isamu. You think Kujo Takayuki would simply sit back while Isamu gained traction? So he decided to strike first. You youngsters and your conspiracy theories. No, it's true. It's the only way to explain it. Otherwise, why would an impartial person like Madame Kujo Sara sign Ryuji's conviction so quickly? They had to find a scapegoat to pacify the Takatsukasa clan, so Kujo Takayuki must have told her to sign it immediately. I'm not accusing Madame Kujo Sara of anything, mind you. I, I respect her very much. But maybe she had no other choice. <laughs> what do you know? I'm sure Madame Kujo Sara must have had her own reasons. The guy was a forensic expert who worked in the station named Shiroyama. I have to admit, he wasn't easy to track down. That Sango really is something, though. She caught him without even breaking a sweat. It turned out that after poisoning Isamu, Shiroyama secretly took the poison to Ryuji's place in order to frame him. Later on, the poison was also found in the forensic office, but that was already after Shiroyama's death. He confessed everything in a testament. That's right. He hung himself in the forensic office not long after Sango was on his trail. Probably because he knew it was only a matter of time before he would be caught. Of course, he didn't admit whether he had been prompted by Kujo Takayuki. He took the responsibility alone. I bet Kujo Takayuki promised him a sizable compensation. After all, Shiroyama had a family to feed. There you go again, pulling conclusions out of thin air. There wasn't any evidence of that at all. Listen, I can almost guarantee that it was the Takatsukasa clan who invited Sango to investigate. We all knew that Ryuji was just a scapegoat. You think the Takatsukasa clan wouldn't figure that out? They're not stupid. So, they were suspicious of the Kujo clan and invited Sango to take the case. However, the Kujo clan were still a step ahead and were able to remove themselves from the situation before the whole thing blew up. They drove Shiriyama to take all the blame as well as his own life. A perfectly clean cut for the Kujo clan. With Shiriyama dead, there was no one left to testify. Even the Electro Archon herself wouldn't be able to do anything. <sighs> you make up stuff faster than a politician. It's a wonder nobody's asked you to be an advisor yet. Hey, that's their loss. <sighs> the whole thing is starting to sound complicated. Hey, I brought the files. <laughs> I bet you got quite nearful just now, huh? <laughs> but don't believe everything they say. After all, people can tell you anything, and it's hard to separate truth from rumors without facts. So what really matters is the case files. Everything laid out here is all that the police station has about the case. Please, take a look. Remember, you may find many clues during an investigation, but not all of them are useful. And in some cases, the clues you will find will not only be useless, but downright misleading. Also, if a clue cannot corroborate anything on its own, you can always compare it with other clues, and maybe then you'll find what you're looking for. Okay, that should just about do it. I'm looking forward to your results. Uh, hold on. What actually counts as a result? Usually, you need to find two things from these clues. A proven motive and proven means. Once you can confirm these two things, the criminal can be proven guilty. Alright, you can go ahead and get started now. I look forward to hearing your verdict.
So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Really? You found the criminal's motive and means that quickly? <laughs> awesome! Alright, let's talk about the motive first. What clue reveals the criminal's motive? Uh, just Shiryama's testament? Though it does have the confession of his motives, this alone is not enough. He could have been lying. We need evidence to prove what he said is true. Perhaps you should give it some more thought. Huh. Excellent work! According to the victim's message, the two had deep conflicts. Although we cannot confirm whether the poison had been requested by the victim or not, it is true that Isamu used Shiroyama's family to blackmail him. Such circumstances could be enough motive for Shiroyama to commit the crime. But wasn't Takatsukasa Isamu good to Shiroyama? He even went to Shiroyama's house to bring health supplements. <gasps> but maybe he didn't really bring health supplements. Maybe it was something bad. <laughs> is that what you think, Paimon? Well, we later found out that what Takatsukasa Isamu sent to Shiroyama's house was indeed health supplements. But if you consider the circumstances, what he sent wasn't important. What was important is that sending the supplements was actually a dangerous signal. Isamu was essentially implying, I can put anything in your wife's supplements at any time. If you really care about her safety, then get me what I want. <sighs> so scary! Your assumption sounds like a real threat! Uh, you're not really that dark inside, are you? You don't really catch criminals by standing in the light, do you? Basically, these two clues work to verify each other, and the murderer's motive is confirmed. Now, all that's left is the means of the crime. Next, which clue confirms the criminal's means? So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? <laughs> Maybe you've seen enough files for the day. I'm afraid these two documents are completely unrelated. Perhaps you should give it some more thought. This blank research log? I don't see how it can explain anything. Perhaps you should give it some more thought. Bingo! The autopsy report confirms that the cause of death was a special toxin. The testament indicates that Chiroyama used his position as a forensic expert to mix the toxin into the cold medicine taken by the deceased. But is that really the truth? Is it not possible that the toxin was mixed into the fish liver paste? Well, according to the toxicology report, this white powder only dissolves in water. Neither rice nor the fish liver paste could be used as a carrier of the toxin. The cold medicine was the only option. Putting the poison elsewhere would not only fail to guarantee a lethal dose, but would also increase the chance of it being noticed by the deceased. Therefore, the means is also confirmed. Add that to the motive for the crime and... Oh, so the murderer really was Shiroyama! Yep, pretty clear-cut, wouldn't you say? Look, I really don't know what Sango is so suspicious about. Yeah, it's pretty clear-cut. Huh, you could say it's almost too clear-cut. Oh, well, let's hear them. Maybe I have answers. What's bugging you? Maybe the report was wrong. The International Trade Association is a gathering place for merchants from all over. Countless merchants pass through the port of Rito every day. It's natural for there to be a couple of missing records here or there. Huh. <sighs> this also puzzles me. Maybe someone doesn't want us being privy to the content inside, or maybe Shiroyama tore a bunch of pages out by accident. But regardless, this isn't essential to the case. Like I said before, a lot of what comes up in an investigation is irrelevant information. The crucial elements are Shiroyama's motive and means, which we have established. 
<laughs> Very nice. Top marks for attention to detail. It doesn't have any real bearing on the case, but let me explain how that works for you. So, why would Madame Kujosara sign one conviction sentencing Ryuji to temporary incarceration awaiting trial, and another conviction sentencing Shiroyama to death? You may have heard some rumors back at the station that when this case first came up, the Kujo clan higher-ups were in dire need of a scapegoat to keep the Takatsukasa clan off their backs. And poor Ryuji became the successful candidate. In less than a week, the conviction was drafted, sent to Madame Kujo Sara, and signed. Allegedly, she knew what it was about as soon as she saw it, and signed it with no questions asked. But anyone who buys this story clearly doesn't know that much about Madame Kujo Sara. She's the most principled person in the entire Tenryo Commission, for goodness sake. So, how would she respond to a case filled with unanswered questions and no confession from the suspect? Oh, you mean... Exactly. Before she signed it, she changed Ryuji's conviction from the death sentence to temporary incarceration. Ryuji escaped a disastrous fate without ever realizing it. Had Madame Kujo Sara not changed his sentence, Sanga would have been seeking justice for a dead man. Why was Sara so lenient with Ryuji? That's the wrong question. This wasn't about Ryuji, but Madame Kujo Sara's principles. The conviction could have been for a Ryuji, a, a Guji, heck, even a Tanuki, and she would have made the same decision. Given the enormous pressure she was under at the time, I'd say she did the most she could. Don't you think? Pressure? Really? Was someone higher up putting pressure on Sara? The pressure came from all sides. The deceased was the leader of the police station and the rising star of the Takatsukasa clan. All eyes were on this case. How this became reduced to the unimaginative rumor that Madame Kujo Sara convicted Ryuji under pressure from her superiors, I have no idea. Ugh. Rumors here, conspiracy theories there, oh, lies at every turn! Fortunately, Madame Kujo Sara works in an open and transparent manner and pays no heed to rumors like this. She just rolls her eyes and forgets all about them. Just because she has never publicly clarified the truth doesn't mean she was hiding anything. So when I asked her about it, saying it was relevant to a case I was working on, she just told me how it was. <laughs> Believe me, in this case, more than any other, I have checked every last detail. Well, I've answered all your lingering questions, and you've checked all the material the police station has, so... What do you think? Case closed? Paimon still feels like something doesn't add up. But then again, Hazo did give us all the files the police station had. Ugh, this is annoying. <laughs> I don't follow. Enlighten me. Huh, right. Why do you keep emphasizing police station every single time? You tell me. Why do I keep emphasizing police station every time? <laughs> so we're finally here, huh? I was starting to think our investigation was about to end a little early. That would have been a real shame. And alive, you finally saw through my little game. You're absolutely right. There is other information that the police station doesn't have. Reason being? It's my own evidence. And this evidence should help answer a couple of your questions more clearly. Why was the research log from the Office of Forensic Science blank? And where did the white powder come from? Aha! Paima knew you were keeping secrets! <laughs> Don't you have secrets too? Uh, no. N uh, nope. Definitely not. Let's talk somewhere else. This isn't the best place for this discussion. This is a quiet spot. Let's talk here. All right. Here's the secret I've been keeping all along. The torn out pages from the research log of the Office of Forensic Science. Great! Uh, but... Uh, Paimon can't believe you kept this a secret all this time! It's not like you think. I wasn't the one who tore out the pages. Look, just read it over first. Finished? Do you see now? 
The method used by the perpetrator to commit his crime wasn't by putting the white powder in the cold medicine. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Where'd you conjure that answer up from? Try again. That's correct. The white powder was Shiroyama's invention. As a forensic doctor, he provided a special cold medicine for Takatsukasa Isamu. The autopsy report showed that this medicine contained a high volume of acidic fruit and vegetable extracts. Then, he tricked Ryuji into sending fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu. When the two substances were taken together, a toxic dose of the substance formed in his body. This is the real modus operandi. Oh, that's awful. One was medicine, and the other was an expensive nutritional supplement. Both completely harmless. True, both are harmless on their own. But when combined, poof. That's it. It was not him who wanted to hide it, but the person pulling the strings behind him. Huh. You mean there was someone else pulling the strings? Aren't you curious where I found these pages from the research log? It was in Kujo Takayuki's secret warehouse. After I found the missing pages, I did some digging around and found out that Shiroyama had worked for Kujo Takayuki before joining the police station. The Kujo clan secretly provided Shiroyama with funds to study forensic science. I guess you could say that Kujo Takayuki's investment paid dividends in this case. Of course, I had only learned all of this after the Vision Hunt decree came to an end. Kujo Takayuki had lost his grip on power, and the Tenryo Commission was undergoing a general reshuffle. To avoid coming under suspicion, Madame Kujo Sara put me in charge of building a case against Kujo Takayuki. I found a huge stash of fish liver paste in his secret warehouse. Nothing hugely incriminating about that, of course, but I still took the trouble to open each and every package until finally, I had to concede that this really was just a huge stash of fish liver paste. But then, underneath the floor tiles where the fish liver paste was stacked, I found a secret compartment with this torn off research report lying inside. So it was him who wanted to frame Ryuji all along. What a nasty piece of work. Let's review the whole case from the top. First, Takatsukasa Isamu, for whatever reason, noticed Shiroyama's talent as a forensic doctor and asked him to develop a special poison on his behalf. But Shiroyama was already working for the Kujo clan, so he refused. Takatsukasa Isamu wasn't about to take no for an answer, and that's where things took a dark turn. He twisted Shiroyama's arm by making a veiled threat to harm his family. All Shiroyama could do was to secretly report everything to Kujo Takayuki. When Takayuki learned what was happening, he instructed Shiroyama to pretend to cooperate with Takatsukasa Isamu, then kill the latter with the white powder once it was fully developed. Meanwhile, Ryuji's only role in this case was to deliver the fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu on Shiroyama's orders. Completely unaware of the fact that he was being used as a pawn and that this was a key ingredient needed to create the poison. After the incident, Kujo Takayuki hoped to make Ryuji the fall guy, until the death sentence was stalled when it reached Madame Kujo Sara. In the meantime, Sango had begun her own investigation. Kujo Takayuki grew nervous that the truth would get out, so he threw Shiroyama to the wolves, hounding him to death and erasing all traces of contact between the two. And yet, he wanted to keep this secret formula, so he hid it. Greedy guy, that Takayuki. He must have wanted to have it on hand just in case he needed to employ it again in the future and make someone else disappear. This Kujo Takayuki is an evil lunatic! We've got to report this to A. Whatever his current punishment is, it needs to be ten times worse! That would be practically impossible. One research log found in his warehouse doesn't prove anything. Even I can think of a hundred excuses. Besides, Ryuji directly contributed to Takatsukasa Isamu's death by delivering the fish liver paste to him. The fact that he was unaware of the true nature of the situation doesn't matter. But... but... he's still innocent, right? Isn't it just a coincidence? Uh... Paimon really doesn't get how the law works. <laughs> 
Legally speaking, the judge would most likely rule that it was accidental. But in practice, Ryuji may still have to end up shouldering some responsibility. So basically, you've been hiding the truth all this time to protect Ryuji. Mental trauma doesn't heal as easily as physical wounds. My biggest worry is that Ryuji would struggle to cope if he knew the truth. He's like an innocent child. He freely gives his trust and his love to everyone that treats him well. That's why he thought of Takatsukasa Isamu as a father figure. I'm pretty sure that to this day, he has never paused to wonder whether Takatsukasa Isamu was actually a good person, or if Sango just hired him as a gopher, or why I left the detective agency. If he found out the facts about Takatsukasa Isamu, I'm afraid it would crush him. Uh, <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm a little less confident than people might think. To prevent Ryuji from getting hurt, I covered up the truth. But by doing so, have I held him back? Did I do the right thing? I couldn't turn to anyone for help, and everyone around me thinks I'm so smart that I should just be able to handle every case on my own. Even if I tried to discuss it with them, they'd just say, Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Hazo. No problem's too difficult for you. But you're different. Unlike them, you don't have that kind of prejudice towards me. You've traveled far and wide and have had all kinds of experiences. It must have taught you a lot. Most importantly, my intuition tells me that you're someone special. That I can trust you and that you can help me. Right? So, I'd like you to be the one to decide whether we should expose the truth or not. Oh, you don't need to tell me what you decide, and you certainly don't need to decide right now. Let's just say I'm leaving this teensy tiny matter up to you. All right, let's head back to the detective agency. You can mull it over on the way. Once you've made up your mind, just tell Ryuji and Sango your verdict. Hey, traveler. Hey, Detective Hazo. You're back already, huh? <laughs> I bet you're tired. Well, I just bought some tonkatsu. Care to join me? There's plenty for everyone. We'd love to. Uh, but... Wouldn't you like to hear the results of our investigation first? No matter what you were able to find, it's all in the past and won't ever change. So I think we'd better chow down first. Besides, if Sango's not happy with the results, we might not have anything to eat later. Come on, Ryuji, pipe down. Let's hear the Traveler's conclusion first. Uh, okay then. Over to you, Hazel and Traveler. Don't worry. Just tell us your findings. Everyone trusts you. As do I. But how? How could this be? Huh. So, that's what really happened? Ryuji, I know it's hard to accept, but... Uh... Wait a minute. Sorry. I... I have quite the stomach ache. Sango, can I take the day off? Sure. Of course. Take the week if you need it. Ryuji will be okay. I didn't expect things to turn out like this. Just give him some time to himself. I think he'll eventually come to accept it. I'm still a little worried, though. What if he doesn't come to work tomorrow? Then we'll go to him. Don't you worry about that, Sango. You need some time to process all of this, too. Uncle Ryuji, was my daddy handsome? I've never seen what he looked like. Of course. Takatsukasa Isamu was a very handsome man. Also, it's not uncle. Call me brother. But you look so old. Well, I'm still your brother. Huh? Uh, how come? Because he treated me like a son. Huh? Who are you guys? We're friends with your big brother Ryuji, and with your father too. Oh, really? Loads of my daddy's friends today. Um, can you tell me some stories about him? I really want to hear them. <laughs> sure. Why, I know enough stories about your old man that if I started talking now, you'd be all grown up before I finished them. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I don't want to grow up too soon then. Um, maybe when I'm a hundred. No, no, um, two hundred years old. Um, no, 300. 
300 years old. Yep, I'm gonna wait until I'm 300 years old before I become a grown-up, so that I can make sure I finish all the stories first. <laughs>